the presidents of the New York Central and the New York, New Haven, and Hartford Railroads will swear that there are only two levels in the Grand Central Station. But I say, there are three levels, because I'd been on the third level. Yes, I took the obvious step. I talked to my psychiatrist friend. Psychiatrist is a doctor who treats mental disorders. I told him that I had been to the third level at the Grand Central Station. He said, It was a waking dream wish fulfillment. You are unhappy. That made my wife kind of mad. What do you want to say? I mean, that the modern world is full of insecurity, fear, war, worry, and all the rest of it, and you just want to escape from it. Well, who doesn't? Everybody I know wants to escape. But they don't wander into any third level at Grand Central Station, like I did. And that's why my friend said that I wanted to escape from this modern world. All my friends agreed to it. For example, my stamp collecting. That's a temporary refuge from reality. Well, my grandfather didn't need a refuge from reality. In his ace, things were pretty nice and peaceful, from all I hear. He started the stamp collection. It's a nice collection, blocks of four, of every US issue, first day covers, and so on. President Roosevelt collected stamps too, you know. Anyway, here's what happened at Grand Central. One night, last summer, I worked late at the office. I was in a hurry to get uptown to my apartment. So, I decided to take a subway from Grand Central. Why? Because, subways are faster than the bus. Now, I don't know why it should have happened to me. I'm just an ordinary guy, named Charlie, 31 years old, and I was wearing a tanga bodin suit, and a hat, with a fancy band. What happened to me was that, I passed a dozen men, who looked just like me. And I wasn't trying to escape, I just wanted to get home to Louisa, my wife. I entered into Grand Central, from Vanderbilt Avenue, and went down the steps to the first level. First level, where trains like the 20th century are taken. Then, I walked down to the second level, from where the suburban trains leave. I entered into a door, for the subway, and got lost. That's easy to do. I'd been in and out of Grand Central hundreds of times, yet, I'm always bumping into new doorways and stairs and corridors. One day, I got into a tunnel, and came out, in the lobby of Roosevelt Hotel. Another time, I came out in an office building, on 46th Street, three blocks away. Sometimes, I think, Grand Central is growing like a tree, making out new corridors, and staircases, like roots. There's a long tunnel, that nobody knows, which leads to Times Square, or maybe to Central Park. As it has been an exit for people, a way to escape from the reality, that's why I got into the tunnel. But I never told my psychiatrist friend about that. The corridor began going left, and slanting downwards. I thought that was the wrong corridor, but I kept on walking. All I could hear, was the sound of my footsteps. Nobody was there. Then, I heard a sort of sound, means open space, and people talking. The tunnel turned sharp left, and I went downstairs. And came out, on the third level at Grand Central Station. For a moment, I thought I was back on the second level, but I noticed, that the room was smaller, there were fewer ticket windows and train gates, and the info booth was wood, and old looking. The man in the booth had a green eye shade, and long black sleeve protectors. The lights were dim, and flickering. Then, I saw, it was because they were open flame gas lights. I saw, the man was taking out his gold watch from his pocket. He was wearing a derby hat, a black suit, and he had a big, black, handlebar mustache. Then I looked around and saw, that everyone was dressed like 1890 something. I never saw so many beards, and fancy mustaches in my life. A woman got into, through the train gate. She was wearing a dress, with leg of mutton sleeves, and skirts over her high shoes. I saw, on the tracks, a very small, carrier and Ives locomotive. Then I thought, I had got into the third level, passed. To make sure, I walked to a newsboy, and looked at the newspapers. It was, the world. The lead story said something about, President Cleveland. And the date was printed, the 11th of June, 1894. I turned towards the ticket window, knowing that, there, I could buy tickets, that would take me in Louisa, anywhere in the US. In the year 1894. And I wanted two tickets, to Galesburg, Illinois. Have you ever been there? 
It's a wonderful town, with big frame houses, old lawns, and large trees whose branches meet overhead, and roofs of the street. And in 1894, summer evenings were longer, and people sat out on their lawns, the men smoking and talking, the women waving fans of palm leaf, with fireflies all around, in a peaceful world. To be back there, at the time, that was before 20 years of the First World War, and over 40 years of the World War II. I wanted two tickets for that. When I began counting the fare in front of the ticket clerk, he was staring at me. That ain't money, mister. And if you're trying to rob me, you won't go very far. Of course, the money there was old style bills, bigger than the money we use nowadays. I turned away, and got out fast. There's nothing nice about jail, even in 1894. And that was that. I left. Next day, during lunch hour, I drew $300, out of the bank, and bought old currency. You can buy old money, at almost any coin dealers. But you have to pay a premium. My $300 bought less than 200 in old style bills, but I didn't care. Eggs were only 13 cents a dozen, in 1894. But after that, I'd never again found the corridor, that leads to the third level at Grand Central Station, although I've tried many times. Louisa was pretty worried, when I told her all this, and, she didn't want me to look for the third level anymore. After a while, I stopped looking for the third level. But now, we both are looking for the third level every weekend, because, now, we have proof, that the third level still exists. My friend, Sam Weiner disappeared. Nobody knew, where did he go? But I thought, he went to the third level. Because, he is a city boy. I used to tell him about Galesburg. I used to go school there, and he always said, he liked the sound of the place. And now, that's where he is. In 1894. And here's the proof. One night, playing with my stamp collection, I found. Well, do you know, what a first day cover is? When a new new stamp is issued, stamp collectors like me, buy some, and use them to mail to themselves, on the first day of the sale, and the postmark proves the date. The envelope, in which they are kept, is called a first day cover. They are never opened. Just a blank paper is put in the envelope. That night, among my oldest first day covers, I found one, that shouldn't have been there. But that was there. It was there, because someone had mailed it, to my grandpa, at his home in Galesburg, that's what the address on the envelope said. And the postmark showed the date, the 18th of June, 1894. The stamp was dull brown, with picture of, President Garfield. I opened the mail. It wasn't blank. It read. I got to wishing that you were right. Then, I got to believing that you were right. And, Charlie. It's true. I found the third level. I've been here for two weeks, and right now, down the street at the Dallies, someone is playing piano, and they're all singing, seeing Nelly home. And I'm invited over, for lemonade. Come on back, Charlie and Louisa. Keep looking till you find the third level. It's worth it, believe me. At the stamp and coin store, I found out that, Sam had bought old style currency, worth $800. That should be enough to set him up a nice little high, feed, and grain business. He always had said, that's what he really wished to do. And he certainly can't go back to his old business. His old business? Why, Sam was my psychiatrist. <laughs>